The red and white scrimmage concluded in front of a record crowd. 14,500 fans showed up here to Flagstaff today. Rich Gray, Bob Kemp for the Fan AM 1060. And the defense ahead of the offense, that's expected at this early on in training camp. But the offense didn't look that sharp today. Is that a concern, or should, what should we be looking forward to in that? I think it would have been surprising had the offense done better than the defense. So I don't know if it's a concern. It would be nice if they had a few more plays. Uh, they missed on a couple big plays, whether it was Skelton uh, you know, overthrowing receivers, which happened frequently, or Cobb throwing the uh, defense, which happened twice. Uh, so I'm sure they'd like to clean those things up, but I don't think it was anything that should be uh, you know, alarming at this point. A couple of plays that did stand out, well obviously Ryan Williams had the big 44-yard play, and Michael Floyd also, he made a couple of spectacular catches. What do you think your your thoughts on their performance? Yeah, first of all, Peterson says he could have tackled Williams, <laughs> but I, I think I he's out of his mind. Yeah. I think he got sucked inside and was just trying to... You know, trying to come up with an excuse. <laughs> so uh, I think the fact that Williams is actually out here participating, which we anticipated that he was going to As far as Floyd, uh, yeah, he's basically the seventh receiver. He's uh, you know in the third unit, but they moved him up a little bit. He even ran a couple plays with the ones towards the end today. And I think, uh, as I wrote it uh, and talked about in the show, I, I think he's not going to be maybe the greatest drill guy. He doesn't look the greatest in the drills. In fact, he struggled in some of these drills. However, once they get down to actually you know, playing games, practices, scrimmages, uh, when it's him against another guy, I think that that's where he stand, could probably stand. I certainly did today. No, uh, quite, no question about yeah, that. Yeah, now on the defense, the, 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 this unit is very confident, and you can see that today. You saw it definitely in the goal line drills, which is, gets a lot of plug yeah, every they got, year. Yeah, they got punched. They did. Yeah, they did. They did. I think that was the one thing the offense made me come away with. Uh, Scout told me that. That's just the offensive line digging in and getting a block, so he didn't want to take any credit for that. But uh, yeah, the uh, goal line uh, drill, which is also a defensive, you know, usually winning drill, uh, the offense did, did, did well there. But uh, if I get the defense for the most part, uh, talking to a number of defensive players just today and all week long, uh, it's just so much you know, second nature now for them about what they're supposed to do, and it's more reactionary type of things than actually thinking. And that's a good sign for Ray Horton as they're moving into the second year in this scheme. Now, the, the cornerback battle, what kind of stood out there for you today? Not much, actually. I think that you know, it was pretty much, when there were completions, I think most of the time it was pretty good coverage. Uh, and uh, yeah, actually Bethel uh, yeah. made a couple plays today. You know, he, he's been running with the threes. and. Yeah, he's going to make this team almost for sure just because of his special teams abilities. But uh, if he can uh, definitely uh, make some plays at the safety position or corner or nickel or wherever they're trying to figure out, and they're trying to figure out where to put him, uh, you know, that enhances his chances tremendously. Now, before we head down the hill, return to the valley and, and come back, what are kind of some of the things that it, you'll take away from our week up here in Flagstaff? Well, I think that this team has more depth than any Cardinals team we've seen in, for a long time, except in, in offense, the offensive line. I think today, when the second team and third team defense was going against the second team offense, it was a distinct advantage for the defense. I think there's a significant drop off. You know, a lot of people are concerned about the starting offensive line. Yeah. While the backup, you know, the offensive line has rookies at left tackle, left guard, and right tackle. And, uh, and actually, the center, backup center, was unable to go today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think that, as I mentioned, and I think we've written about and talked about a little bit, is uh, I would think uh, once the waiver wire hits in a month or so, that they might be looking for some veteran backup linemen. And that's another reason why a lot of people going into the draft kind of wanted to go offensive line yeah. instead of Michael Floyd. But well, obviously, that other people be me. <laughs> well, yeah. I was yeah, in, okay. I was included in that as oh, well. Okay, okay. No, but I, I I ended up liking the Michael Floyd pick. And well, it ended up you know, because of the Massey thing. I yeah. think it would have been maybe a different assessment had he not fallen to the fourth round. And he actually looked good today. I, I watched him a lot. I think he did a nice job. So. But he wasn't lined up against the ones more than a handful of times, if that. So for Bob Kemp, for, my name's Rich Gregg, and we will be back up here in Flagstaff on August 12th through the 15th. So we'll be doing more daily video vlogs from Flagstaff. But until then, we'll have lots of coverage on Bob's show, the Sports Zone, on Monday. Plenty of sound you'll hear from both uh, quarterbacks. Both quarterbacks, but I mean, a plethora of. A plethora, excellent yeah, word. Thank you. <laughs> of, 
of players coming off the field from today's uh, red and white scrimmage. So again, and Wiz. And Wiz, of course. And Wiz, of course. So for Bob Kemp, I'm Rich Gray. Thanks for checking out the Fan1060.com.